Hey everybody, welcome back. Now today we're going to be looking at the best places to stake your hard-earned Solana. Now this includes using a non-custodial Web3 wallet, in this case Phantom here, which is going to give you an experience similar to other Web3 wallets on Cardano, Avalanche, Terra and Phantom. We'll also check out staking on centralized exchanges such as Binance, where your returns are actually significantly better at the expense of sacrificing self-custody over your wallet. Now as a bonus, we'll also look at whether it's worthwhile saving your Solana uh, on fintech platforms such as BlockFi, uh, Celsius here, uh, Nexo here, along with uh, Crypto.com, where you can earn a regular interest on your Solana. Now this is similar to staking, it's just another way to earn a yield on your Solana and grow your bag. All right, please drop a like if you're a fan of passive income or Solana. <laughs> Without further ado, let's dive on in. All right, so the standard way to stake a cryptocurrency is to use your own Web3 wallet, which is non-custodial, which means that you're in control of your crypto and your private keys at all times. Now, one of the most popular Web3 wallets for Solana is Phantom here, which is what we're gonna be using today. The experience is gonna be quite similar to Yoroi on Cardano, the Avalanche wallet on Avalanche, the Phantom F wallet on Phantom, or Terra Station on the Terra blockchain. Now, to get started, you can download the wallet as a browser extension, right here. You will then create a new wallet, save down the secret key phrase, <laughs> make sure you don't lose it, and then you'll transfer some Solana over from an exchange. Thank goodness the gas fees are pretty cheap, especially compared to Ethereum. Once you've got some Sol in your Phantom wallet, click on the Sol balance here, and then click on Start Earning Sol. The final step is to choose a validator to delegate your stake with. Now this is where you want to go to validators.app uh, along with stakeview.app to get more information about the roughly 1,600 validators on the network so that you can make an informed decision with who to stake with. Now, if all you care about are raw returns, then stakeview.app is great because it ranks all the validators by effective APYs, basically your yearly returns after factoring in for fees. On the other hand, validators.app, um, it doesn't provide APY data, unfortunately, but instead it gives you a more holistic view of each validator and uh, scores them out of 11, right, right here, by taking into account factors such as fees and uptime and so on. Uh, generally speaking on Solana, the larger validators are more established and regarded as most trustworthy, but they will charge you a commission of up to 10% uh, for the privilege of staking with them. But uh, to be frank, Solana has no automatic slashing. So safety-wise, your soul is safe. Whether you're staking with a large validator, such as the popular Everstake, representing about 15 million Solana, that's almost 4% of the entire circulating supply, compared to a smaller player. So as a result, you'll actually want to stake with the smaller validators because they charge a smaller commission and you'll help keep the Solana blockchain more decentralized. So for this demo, I'm actually gonna go with another well-known validator, Leapfrog. They offer a great 7% return, topping the chart here on StakeView. They charge zero commissions, and they're a relatively small validator, representing roughly just 0.1% of the circulating supply. Okay, back to my Phantom wallet. Let's stake a whopping one soul with Leapfrog. Click on Start Earning Soul. Type in Leapfrog. There we go. Type in one, click on Stake. Now, once your stake is finalized, which might take a few hours up to a day, you'll soon begin earning rewards. Now, these rewards auto compound and they're paid out every epoch, which on Solana is roughly 2.5 days. For your information, Cardano's epochs are five days long. Now, finally, if you have a lot of Solana, you can actually spread your soul out across many different validators at the same time. You're not limited to just one, right? So you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket. Now, this is unlike Cardano, where you're effectively delegating your entire wallet. Right, which means that all your ADA in a particular wallet must delegate to a single validator at any given time. So here, this wallet is pointing to the Cardanians.io staking pool. But uh, on Solana, you can point your hard-earned soul towards multiple validators, right? Maybe one that maximizes returns, maybe one that supports a cause that you believe in, maybe several smaller validators to help keep Solana decentralized, all up to you. Okay, so that's staking Solana on a non-custodial web free wallet very easy to do. You'll retain the private keys to your wallet and you'll earn a return of around 6 to 7% a year, which is the band in blue here. Now I hear you asking, what are the returns in yellow here? 
Well, this brings us to the next method, which is to stake your Solana on a centralized exchange, right? Such as Binance, FTX, Kraken, Huobi, and the Crypto.com exchange. Now, many exchanges these days offer what's called staking as a service for a variety of cryptocurrencies and tokens. Now, as you can see here, I'm actually staking quite a fruit basket of stuff on this Binance account here. Now, unfortunately, you do lose self-custody over your crypto when staking on any centralized exchange because you don't own the private keys to your wallet. But uh, in return, you'll get class leading returns and the convenience of not having to move your crypto in and out of an exchange to a web free wallet just to stake your Solana. Now, speaking of these class leading returns, you really do need to stake on Binance for that. If you look at the rest of the exchanges, they don't offer anything particularly compelling in terms of returns. 6%, 3.5%, uh, you can do quite a bit better than that staking on Phantom and there you own your private keys. Binance though, pretty much leaves everyone else in the dust. You'll get nine to 13% per annum, depending on whether you stake in a 30 day pool, 60 day pool or 90 day pool. Now the lowest returns on Binance, which is 9% in the 30 day pool, that's already higher than the best yield that you can get staking in a web free wallet, which is around 7%. Just be aware that the 90 day pools are typically have a personal limit. For Solana, there's currently a three sole personal quota. So just keep that in mind for the Solana whales out there. All right, so what am I doing? Well, not financial advice, but I do quite like staking on Binance. Generally, they offer considerably higher staking rewards, especially for the layer one cryptocurrencies. For example, Polkadot, 20%, uh, Near Protocol, 21%, uh, Solana, as we looked at already, up to 13%, Cosmos Atom, 30%, Avalanche, 21%, uh, Terra Luna here, 18 to 19%. Look, these kind of returns, for me, they justify the loss of self-custody, especially given how reputable Binance is. Uh, they hold most of their crypto in cold storage. They've got a great long-term leadership team, and they've shown in the past that they'll return funds if they lose any through hacks. But uh, I do implore you to sit down and think about what's best for you. Right? So if you don't want to entrust a centralized company with your crypto, uh, maybe you're a crypto purist who prioritizes keeping a blockchain decentralized, or maybe Web3 and DeFi is what drives your passion for crypto, right? Then staking on a Web3 wallet makes more sense. If raw returns is all you care about, and look, you like the convenience of an all-in-one platform to do everything, buying, trading, hodling, earning, staking, then Binance makes good sense. By the way, if you wanna sign up to any of these large exchanges, including Binance, I've got some links down in the descriptions below where you can get a permanent discount off your trading fees. Okay, finally, instead of staking Solana, you can also earn a yield by saving it on a crypto interest account. Now here, BlockFi, uh, Celsius, Nexo, and uh, Crypto.com, they are among the biggest players providing this kind of service. Now, the way it works is you're depositing your crypto with these companies who then invest it or lend it out, and then they pay you a cut, which is actually quite similar to how savings accounts work in a traditional bank. Now, I actually use all of these platforms to grow my longer term hodl bags, especially for Bitcoin and Ethereum, where I can get a pretty good four to 6% return per year. Now, personally, I think it's a good idea to separate your crypto into shorter term trading accounts if you do trade, and longer term, do not touch wallets, right? And platforms like Celsius, Nexo, uh, Crypto.com, and so forth, they provide the extra benefit of paying you a yield on top when you hodl with them. I have some sign up links for these platforms below as well. Feel free to use them and you'll get some free Bitcoin on your first deposit. All right, so what kind of returns can you get on Solana on these sorts of platforms? Well, with BlockFi, you can get 5%. Uh, on Celsius, you're looking at 5.5%. On Nexo, 6%. And then finally on Crypto.com, look, you can go as high as 6.5%, but this assumes you're staking uh, $40,000 worth of Crow tokens. If you're not staking any, um, then the returns are nothing to write home about. Overall, the returns for Solana on these fintech platforms, uh, right here, BlockFi, Celsius, Nexo, Crypto.com, they're not terribly compelling, right? At the same time, all of these are custodial wallets as well. You don't own the private keys to your crypto. So personally, I think staking Solana on Binance, right, or a web free wallet like Phantom makes more sense. Not financial advice, just my opinion given the data. On Binance, you trade away self-custody for class leading returns on your Solana. And on Phantom or another native Solana Web3 wallet, for example, Soulflare or Exodus, you'll retain control of your own private keys and you still get a respectable 7% return. 
Finally, this diagram will be on my blog. A lot of the data and research that I do for YouTube are published on my blog. So I'll drop the link down below if you wanna learn further. All right, everyone, let's leave it there. Please drop a like and consider subscribing, especially if you're a fan of crypto passive income. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day or evening wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one.